Hi everybody. For those of you who missed Small Business Connect this morning, I'm going to do my recap a little differently today. Instead of in writing, I'm going to do it by video because, well, I stink at making videos and I really need to learn for my business. So here we go. Um, this week's message is a little expansion on what we talked about in church this Sunday from Pastor Joel's message uh, from Bashar Rehoboth uh, this past Sunday. Uh, the message was, do not underestimate God because God does not underestimate you. He used the um, he, he used the story of Moses in Exodus to prove his point. You know, Moses, by all um, by, by all rights, should have been dead. He should have never been to the point that he crossed the Red Sea and saved God's people. Think about it. Pharaoh ordered all baby boys to be killed. So, you know, if you were a girl, hey, you're all right. But if you were a boy, and you know what? Midwives didn't listen. They chose not to listen because the midwives had a strong faith in God and they had more trust in God and more faith in him than they did in the Pharaoh. So they decided not to listen. You know, if they chose to listen, then, you know, Moses would have been, so that would have been strike one against him. You know, and not only was Moses born, but he was in hiding for three months. His parents kept them hidden for three long months. That's 90 days, people. 90 days. And, you know, trying to hide a baby, um, somebody probably would have heard him and made him go, like, really, that's, that, that, that's pretty amazing in itself to even make it 90 days when the Pharaoh says, uh, you're a boy, you're going to be killed. So, Getting back to my point about Moses should have been dead. You know, he was sent down in a river in a basket after he made his first 90 days in hiding. His parents put him in a basket, sent him down a river. Sure, what could go wrong with that, right? You know, Moses tells his people um, to let the people go, but here the, uh, here the parents are letting Moses go right down the river. You know, just floating right along, you know, not that there are any crocodiles or, out there or any stumps or any rock that could, you know, make the basket fall over or rip or currents or ripples that, you know, might make the basket fall over, make the baby drown. Um, you know, that, that, that's a pretty dangerous ride. And on top of that, somebody finds the basket of the baby, picks them up, takes care of it as their own. That is another amazing miracle right there, no matter which way you slice it. You know, that's strike two, if you ask me. You send the baby down a river where crocodiles could get it, basket could flip over. If that's not enough, stranger picks it up, could have said, look, it's a boy. <laughs> Didn't happen that way. Third strike against Moses. He goes to the Pharaoh, and he said, God told me to tell you to let his people go. You're Pharaoh, you're the most powerful person in the land. Pharaoh could have just said, you know what? I'm not going to listen to you. <laughs> Instead, Pharaoh's playing games like, yeah, prove it to me. Prove to me that your God is actually saying this. So yeah, he proves it 10 times over. Some locusts, uh, some frogs, and some blood, uh, turns of water into blood. I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on. But really, he didn't even have to get that far. He let Moses live. He could have just cut his head off right then and there. So by all rights, Moses should have been dead. He should have not even gotten to the point of the ten plagues. He should have not, let alone crossing the, crossing the sea after having it part and live in the promised land. And why did that happen? You know, you could ask yourself, how did Moses make it through all these little miracles to, to do what he did? Because God chose Moses to do great things. 
He chose Moses just like he chooses us. You know, God knows every hair on our head. Just like it says in Job, God knows every hair on our head. He knows every cell in our body. He knows everything that we're going to do from the time that we're born to the time that we die. He knew he was going to use Moses. He had a plan for Moses. God had a plan for Moses. God has a plan for everyone. He even has a plan for you and me. God knows what this plan is. He knows what his plan is, even if you don't. All you have to do is put your faith in him. One of the reasons we're supposed to strive to be more like God is because we're not perfect. God is perfect. God is infallible. God does not make mistakes. His plan is perfect for us because God does not make mistakes. We're humans. We make mistakes. That's why we're forced to have car insurance. I guarantee you, God had a car and he was down here. He would not need insurance. He would probably have a more spotless driving record than anybody I know. And speaking of mistakes, we're all told we know stories. Maybe it happened to you or somebody close to you. You're told you were a mistake when you were born. Babies are not mistakes. God does not make mistakes. God chose each one of those babies to be born. God has a plan for each one of those babies, just like he had a plan for Moses, just like he had a plan for Job, just like he had a plan for David, and just like he has a plan for you too. Even if you do not know what that plan is, all you have to do is have faith that you're part of that plan. Your plan may not be as great as Moses. You may not be able to part the Red Sea, but it is not any less important than anyone else's plan. You know, I don't know how many of you actually play chess, um, but in chess, there are 16 pieces on each side um, and they're ranked from the weakest to the strongest. You have eight pawns, which are the weakest. You have two rooks, two bishops, two knights. You have a king and a queen. You know, there are actually more weak pieces than there uh, of more weak pieces than there are of each stronger piece. There are eight pawns, two bishops, two knights, two rooks, one queen, one king, but eight pawns. And you know what? Even a pawn can become a queen or any other higher rank piece if it's moved properly. But each piece works together as a team. And that team works together to achieve a common goal. And that is to win the game. You know, just like God gives us each a talent, we use them together as a church to spread God's word. Your position or job may not be glorious, but it's not any less important to God's overall plan than the person who leads. God chose you and puts you in the position that you are in. You may not understand it, but all you have to do is put your trust in God because God does not make mistakes. He doesn't put everybody in leadership position. He doesn't make everybody out to be a leader. Sometimes he makes people in, in, in back offices and don't think that the back office job is any more important than yours or your job is any less important than a person who's fixing the computer system at work. It's not. They all work together for the common purpose. And if you're going through a rough time, it's no mistake that you were there for a reason. We may not understand that reason. All we can do is put our faith in God. Like, for example, some of you may not know that I have a condition with my pancreas where it's slowly shutting down on me. It's uh, not a common illness. There's no cause for it. It's just something that I was blessed to have. And, um, you know, it 
It's one of those things where as the pancreas starts slowly shutting down, um, I go, th I occasionally get what's called a flare up, which is I start getting sick. Um, and it's real bad. It starts with digestive problems, major cramps. I'm hunched over from days to weeks, very weak. I have to struggle to get my work done. If I can even stay awake, um, I can't eat right for a couple days to a couple weeks. Uh, and it happened uh, over uh, last week and through the weekend, and I'm still trying to get over it. Um, I wasn't even sure if I was going to make it to church on Sunday. But I went anyway, you know, despite how bad I felt. And the reason why is because I believe you praise God when times are good, and you praise God when times are bad. And, you know, when when you're getting sick like, like I did in the beginning of tax season, that's not a good time. But I went and I praised God anyway. You know, sometimes I question why I have this illness. I don't understand why I have it. I just accept that it's part of God's plan for me. You know, I trust in God. And I believe that I was meant to have this illness for a reason. I don't have to be happy that I'm sick. But I'm making the best of the situation. I still went to church. I praise God. I don't have to be happy with the situation. But I have to be content in it. You know, when Paul was in prison, he wasn't happy that he went to prison. In fact, I, I don't know too many people who would be happy that they're going to prison. He wasn't happy with the situation. But he was happy in the situation, which means make the best of the situation that you're in. Be happy with the situation. I mean, be happy in the situation, not with it. God doesn't put you in situations that you can't handle. God puts you there for a reason. And that same God that put you in that situation could pull you out of it. All you have to do is believe. I'm not perfect. And I'm not always perfect in my understanding. But my trust in God, that he is perfect and infallible, makes me believe that it is no mistake that I am right here where he wants me to be in this exact moment. And no matter how good or how bad times are, I'm going to rely on him, put all my faith in him. And that's what I hope you do too.